Hey everybody, my name is Arnell of uh, Visionary Business Development and this is Michelle with Bossibly. And welcome to The Grind is a podcast where we go and we drink coffee. <laughs> ah, and we complain about things that we've read about online that are business related. <laughs> you guys should have a fun time. Um, Michelle, why don't you just uh, tell everybody for a second on what exactly is Bossibly? So it's helping young professionals in the workplace with mm -hmm. icky, sticky stuff and the businesses that employ them. Okay, all right. So what's one of the biggest like disparities that you usually come across? Folks having trouble with their bosses. That's probably number one. <laughs> is, it, is it like more on the communication <laughs> sides of things or? Conflict. Conflict. Yeah, just ugly generally. stuff. I don't know how to say mm. that I don't, I don't like what I'm doing. Um, I don't know how to deal with my performance. Mm. I'm afraid to talk to my boss. Mm. Okay, All so, that kind of stuff. So as, as possibly you kind of come in and you help them prep on how, how to uh, deal with these different exactly. crises. Exactly. Well, that's awesome. That's actually yep. going to tie right into what we've got going on today. Um, we came across an article because it's not like we didn't script this. We scripted it a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we came across an article called Nine Harsh Realities of What Motivates Millennial Workers. And I've got that article right here and I'm going to post a link down below. And essentially it says that 46% of employees in the workplace will be millennials by 2020. Fascinating. Yeah. But the article then goes on to say that uh, the harsh reality is that millennials need flexibility and personal time, that they need, that uh, bosses need to provide frequent feedback, uh, that there needs to be new titles that are created and in between steps because we're social media oriented and we like to brag. Uh, that we need to be encouraged to have multiple ways to collaborate using technology and also office perks. Shout out to Google on that one. <laughs> I love the idea of se having a segue through a 50 foot office. Um, this is, this is uh, don't I forget to your, cut the bullshit. Favorite, cut the bullshit. <laughs> right. And so we have a low value, we have a low threshold for inauthenticity. Yes. So, uh, you know, stay real, right? Um, we also need to know the why when we need to help be, be connected to the business. Simon Sinek. That's right. That's right. That was a, that was a really great it's an podcast. Awesome, yeah. awesome the, podcast and yeah, an awesome book yeah. if nobody's read that one. Yeah. Um, she's actually read a whole lot of books. I feel terrible about myself. <laughs> what did I say? Have you read this one? Yeah. yeah like, what about know what? this one? It's I like just, watching the movie, right? Yeah, I, just, right? I, just, I, just, I watched a TED <laughs> talk about movie? the book. No. I watched a TED talk about the book. I'm good. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. You got the click notes. Yeah, That's awesome. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, and then you have to pri prioritize giving back because we want to help out our community and we want to have a culture that embraces fun. I don't know why they called it the nine harsh realities of a, the millennial workforce but apparently those are all really harsh things for uh for, for business our, owners yeah, here maybe yeah for our <laughs> boomer bosses <That's> right. <laughs> the bad bosses so, they don't like to hear any of that stuff so yeah so i think like um you know when we were talking about we were talking about that a little bit earlier and we were saying okay well like how do you take those nine points and you actually en en enact change and make it part of your change management initiative in your in your organization and it's got to be something that small businesses can handle but also something for large businesses as well like what's the best way that you feel they businesses can go about that from a from a leadership standpoint performance mm -hmm. looking at performance and feedback so of all of the stuff that's in that article I mean I do like the cut the bullshit one that's probably my favorite however actually enacting it and doing something with it is providing feedback so so many the, the folks that I work with so many of them are struggling with talking to the boss or dealing Dealing with their performance and they they're not getting feedback frequently and so that the frequent part is what kills me I talked to this dude at Boeing and their process is a month so they meet with their people monthly that's not often enough especially for somebody that is struggling or is not sure or afraid to ask mm -hmm. you need to be meeting with them at least every other week sometimes yeah. weekly especially if they're new in the role how uh, how 
legit is it to actually expect the middle management to sit down and have these board meetings like you know like weekly in my mind I would imagine like you know you come in on a Monday yeah. you know you get into the huddle you go what's everybody doing today okay break let's go it's right? not it's one-on-one -on -one. Yeah. so this so what I'm talking one -on -one. about is one-on-one -on -one feedback okay. so and it doesn't have to be an hour it doesn't have to be formal it can be a 15 minute mm -hmm. conversation like you and I are having right now how's it going what's going on with you how can I help you what roadblocks are in your way right, right? And, and that not, is yeah. huge and, and so it's not about it's not it's, it's, it's not about the critique it's really about how do I how do I help you uh, to do your job better, right, right? Correct. So from a management correct. point of view, uh, I think there's a lot of an authoritarian taste to it, right? Whereas yeah. it should be more of a support. If you if you were to take that middle management and put it right underneath the front lines and it's supposed to bolster the front lines and their ability to actually perform, I think that would pretty, probably be a, a great way to do it. I think so. And I lo the way I like to look at it is it's it's influence, right? Support, servant leadership, showing up to help your people do whatever it is you're wanting them to do so you can ultimately be successful. And if you're not doing that and you're, you're, you've got the top down, do what I say and how I say it, they're not gonna follow you. Right. They don't, and then that, and that's how you lose people. And, and then you create a, a mechanism of fear. That sucks. Who right. wants to be in a situation where I'm afraid to, to show up and ask you for help right. because I'm struggling with whatever it is I'm doing. Right, and that, right. as you as you enter the workforce, I remember being terrified to deal with people that were older than me or that had more experience because I don't want to look stupid. So you got to create a mechanism for allowing them to ask those questions mm -hmm. and getting the feedback and it's back to that the feedback is key yeah so now is it uh, last question before we have to wrap up um in terms of implementing a change if i'm if i'm if i'm an employee and i'm here trying to you know and i'm feeling like it's a dead-end job i'm mm. not really going anywhere you know my next promotion you know i'm expecting within a year years come and gone you know, I don't want to be there three years hence, so I'm like now planning my to step off, but I feel like last ditch effort, I'm going to go to my management team and I'm going to say what to get them to kind of make a try and make it try, try to make that move. Do I point them towards this article? Do I mm. point them towards possibly? As the employee, That's a free plug. You're talking about as an employee, <laughs> right? Yes. So what I've, what I've talked to folks about doing is asking three questions. And this is the, the three questions also helps you decide if you want to stay. What should I start doing? What should I stop doing? And what should I continue doing? Hmm. And so then it puts the, as an employee, right? And you, it can be the boss or the employee. Both could do this, right? But what's beautiful about that is that you're, you're asking as an employee, what am I doing right? right what am I doing wrong mm -hmm. and what should I fix mm -hmm. and so and you may not like the information that comes out of it that's okay and you may not be able to fix the stuff that's going wrong but you also will then start making a decision as to whether or not the dialogue is moving in the right direction to stay to make it better to continue doing what you want to do that's what I, I and I think it can that that can work Absolutely. from a boss's perspective or from an employee's perspective that's really interesting I think you'd actually do that with life yeah you can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah so, well, right um, start stop or continue yeah, right absolutely so if you get confused about any of those steps Michelle from possibly <laughs> where's the best place people can find you possibly.com okay and if you want to find me well, I mean, you're already on my Facebook, so <laughs> there's that. And then you're also on my Instagram, so there's that. But visionarybusinessdevelopment.com. You can also hit me up at visionarybusinessdevelopment at Gmail or ardell at workless.guru. Thank you, and you've been listening to The Grind. Cheers. Peace out.